So are, are we supposed to be on at the same time? Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. So Will is like a super busy producer, track guy. Can get him on. But hey, I have a, I have a, my roommate, you're familiar with Dylan Marlowe? I'm not, but it doesn't matter. What's his name? Dylan Marlowe. So Dylan, so you're, I mean, you're doing good. You've got millions of listens now on, on Spotify or whatever. Yeah. You're all about it. it has 10 million plays. Okay, I didn't know that. That's that's good. I didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, crushing awesome. it, bro. You see that thing with Joni Mitchell on the other day? She got up and she sang, you know, and she's uh you guys know who Joni Mitchell is? Mm-mm. Push if you want, you can just push them off the screen. <laughs> yeah. Just like just uh, yeah, there you go. They look uh, better already. Hey, this is Party Like a Rockstar podcast, and I'm your host, Joel. Today's episode is brought to you by Misha's Kind Foods. They're an LA-based small business making the world's finest non-dairy cheese on the market today. They're lactose-free, paleo, keto, kosher, perev, and 100% vegan. If you like what you see, check out the next video. If you like this video, please subscribe and like by clicking the little round button on the bottom right. To learn more about me or our other guests on the show, go to joelrody.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. The handle is Joel Rohde. If you haven't already read my book, Memoir of a Rohde, it's now available through Amazon and paperback Kindle or as an audiobook. I hope you enjoy the show. Noah Hicks is a country artist. He recently released a music video for his new single, Breaking Up and Getting Drunk. It's kind of cool. His billboard chose him as their country rookie of the month back in April. He's releasing a six-track EP, called Tripping Over My Boots, September 30th. His buddy is Noah Marlowe. Noah Marlowe is a country artist too. He's releasing a single called Why Did We Break Up Again next month. And he's also releasing a six song EP in a couple months. You guys are busy together here. It's good, man. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you some shit right out of the gates here. So I, I spent some time listening to Breaking Up and Getting Drunk. I watched the music video and I want to know how the fuck did you guys afford Zach Galifianakis? And why are you drinking Miller the whole fucking video? You know, it's the the one beer that just good manly, you know, you can't drink Michelob. The song says bud. I guess, bud heavy. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I mean, hey. I want to know who did your art department. <laughs> John. <laughs> Okay, so I don't want to go Miller over, but in case you get sponsored one day, you'll they'll be like, we can't pick you because you fucking drank Miller. My last name is Miller. So I was I noticed oh, it okay. immediately. I was like, oh, and then who's Zach Galifianakis? That's just my buddy from back home. He's just an old frat dude. <laughs> he's okay. a dude. College he's he was an incredible performer. That's why <laughs> I was like, he's very talented, this guy. <laughs> it was good. And then what was the other one? I like the beginning of the video was, uh, how did you do it? Let me try. It's going real good. Real, 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 real good. Yeah. <laughs> Is that pretty good? <laughs> there you go, right? Close enough. Close enough. Okay, cool. So how do you two guys know each other originally then? That's a that's what's funny to talk guess. about. Yeah. It's like a new age, like a Through Instagram. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. So you yeah. guys are both doing good in country. I know that. So you're you're coming up. Um, but you knew each other because of Instagram because you're both sharing music all the time, or am I an idiot and it was some hot chick that you fucking both hitting on on Instagram or something? I don't know. But how did you guys meet? Music thing, right? Yeah. So like, I I feel like I was definitely the approacher, if that makes sense. I was the uh, I was a predator, and Dylan was my prey. <laughs> and he lived in Statesboro, and he already was. He had a buddy that was uh, Trey Landon, and he had like, and they were like, you know, just. I just working your way up and you know, you see like Dylan's like, all right, he looks like somebody I can get along with my age, whatever. DM him. We start texting. He sends me songs. And I was, I'm sure I, I can't remember if I sent him a bunch of songs. I know that I still have some old ones on my phone. So and you then, wrote, you write to him on Instagram and you just say, Hey, I, I, I like your shit. I don't know. Probably, yeah. Right. I think it's, and the guy writes back, Oh, okay, cool. You know, who the fuck are you? But <laughs> no, <laughs> no. were you guys already in, cause you're both, you're from georgia is that right and he, and yeah we're both georgia. from georgia yep, Georgia boys. both from georgia so you guys contacted one another back there or here back this is back five or six yeah. years ago at least right at, at least five really. yeah for sure right at the beginning 
All right, first time you guys met up in person, how drunk you get? <laughs> uh, that first time I met up in person, you had that Eddie Zedek round with Brian and some. Oh other yeah, and that and that was the first time I met you because Screech yeah. gave me shit about really. Yeah. So Dylan wrote my first single. I all, he he hundred percent or my first single raised on the radio. So that was kind of like the. It's kind of funny how like you know, you know you said the roadies you hear the roadie stories like ours is like kind of like a it's literally we our trees have been growing together if that yeah. makes sense like it's literally yeah. kind of cool how it works like worked out like that that's super really cool there. but yeah he said he would send me songs that were really good and you, I think you had eleven eleven come out yeah yeah and then I hit up you to see who did that did all that okay so that's how you met Brad and, Brad, and that's how okay, I met Brad yeah, yeah yeah and that's how I met Brad <clears throat> and then started working but through. did he start all these songs about drinking is that his fault <laughs> probably <laughs> writing like beautiful love songs and then this guy came along he's like we're gonna write about drinking <laughs> so that's all i did where i was from right yeah might be guilty i'm definitely i would i'm getting in the songwriter thing but i never would like i never thought thought of myself as songwriter i never tried to write songs like i like i'm too i can't decide on what underwear to wear in the morning so i can't decide the line but i mean no, Dylan, no underwear no underwear is the answer exactly. but the uh <laughs> It was a Dolly Parton. You know, they did that film on her recently. Mm. Dolly Parton. So I think that's what she said. She just considers herself a songwriter first and foremost. And it's yeah. kind of like, oh, come on. You got the greatest fucking country voice, my opinion, ever. <laughs> I, I can't get enough of Dolly. But you consider yourself more of a songwriter. It's cool. You know, it's cool to think of because writing a good song, it's fucking hard. You know, it's really hard. 100%. That's why. Yeah. I, I had a guy him. on here, uh, Bob Reagan, man, and this fucking dude, him and he brought on his buddy. They've written so much country. It's just crazy. And I got, uh, I wrote this song. I told you, I wrote this song for Darius Rucker and I got invited to this singer songwriter thing. And all these dudes were legit. Like there were no joke. Like every song on the radio, one of the guys in that room wrote it. <laughs> you got dumbass me sitting there. And I'm just looking. Well, Bob Reagan was like the man of all of them, you know. And he wrote, he co wrote the song uh, Dig Two Graves, Randy Travis. Mm. You, know, you can dig two graves, but carve only one stone because without you here, I'm all alone. It's something like that. And I remember looking, I'm like, you won the game, bro. That is the best lyric I fucking ever heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I got them to come on. It was real neat, dude. Garth Brooks was a session singer for them. At like Man, 30 okay. bucks that's wild and then so, that's it was like 40 bucks or something to sing a fucking uh, demo that was the cost to have garth brooks sing and he wasn't their number one choice wow yeah mm. nuts yeah my song unfortunately was about not drinking so you guys wouldn't like it <laughs> <laughs> no, i still like it yeah i don't know it was where it was a uh, moretti beer it's like has a guy in it there's like a guy wearing like a, a hat so I'm, I'm wasted. I wrote this song to the dude on the beer can. And then, I don't know, it changed somehow to be about God. And then Darius sang it. It did really good on Christian radio. Is that 100 percenter? The what? You got it by yourself? No. I, wait, hell no. No, I'm not that talented. <laughs> no, I wrote it with uh, Dean. Dean was uh, is in Toad the Wet Sprocket. If you guys have heard of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'd know a couple of their songs. I'd sing them, but is bad <laughs> but they did a big song called all i want you definitely know it if you play it you, you'll have heard it it's like the song that's on in the supermarket every time you go in <laughs> so yeah it's cool anyway so you you're going you got some dates lined up i saw noah so you're doing uh you got you got indiana coming up and then uh you're going back to georgia yeah that would be a good song title going but actually i don't know if you might not know going back to georgia is a song with nancy griffith and um Adam Duritz from Counting Crows. We should listen to it since you guys are yeah. virgins. <laughs> but uh, and then you're going on tour with uh, what is it, Granger Smith? No, I just got one. I got one show with him, and then I got a couple headliner stuff, and you know, just, just other stuff here and there. I got a weekend out with Ernest, but I know shit. Dylan's got Dylan's got a fat little tour coming up. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? Showboat. Showboat. I know. Showboat. I, push, I, if you want, you can just push them off the screen. <laughs> just like, just uh, yeah, there you go. That uh, better already. This is way more interesting. What do you got? No, we're just, we got some dates with Cole Swindell coming up and um, yeah. in the fall. So That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Word. Our, yeah. Just still Have either of you guys done a national tour yet? Yeah, I guess technically. No, you did. That's yeah. a national tour, bro. You went out, yeah. you went out to California. 
Yeah, we went out with a guy named Dylan Scott for a couple months and opened his shows up, and they were really fun. Yeah, you so. had, I mean, yeah, this will be your second tour hopping on with yeah. a, a major label act, which is pretty pretty lit. Yeah. yeah. I don't what know are you guys gonna do when you <laughs> yeah. say what? What are you guys gonna do when you have your own places? You'll be like you'll be like in Talladega Nights. You'll be calling each other and be like, "Hey, how I do hunt. I turn on the spa?" Oh, yeah, no, it's probably hunt all the exactly. Time. Back. I'm gonna pack and cut there on your property. Hell yeah, yeah, probably what's hunt. The all one? What's it in there? The turn. How do you turn on your spa and your stereo at the same time? Oh, you come on a stereo system, yeah. <laughs> that was Love great. It. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's good stuff. So. So, um, so Dylan, so you're, I mean, you're doing good. You've got millions of listens now on, on Spotify or whatever. Yeah. You're all about it has 10 million plays. Okay. I didn't know that. That's, that's good. I didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're crushing awesome. it, bro. See what else? And you're, you got some coming up too. I'll keep the country is at 6 million something. So on it. yeah, you're doing, I mean, you're rocking. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, well, it's good. So, are you you write this stuff yourself? Do you also co-write with people? Yeah, I could write a bunch. Still, yeah. Um, my process is a lot like a lot of times I'll kind of have an idea and try to write. I'm I'm very like stubborn when it comes to writing. Like I want to, I kind of want to write what I want to write. What do you so want to write? Just like whenever I have an idea, I kind of want to write it my way rather than going in and writing for somebody else. And in this town, like with us writing, you know you sometimes you get hooked up with some other artists writing and sometimes songwriters want to write towards radio or something more mainstream. So I try to like write a lot of my stuff. I'll try to like write the chorus or write a verse or a melody or something the night before and take it in. Cause I just, I'm stubborn. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. So are you guys more players or you're more lyricists or what, what's your strengths? Do you think? Hmm. Probably definitely for me, like melodies. Probably melody and lyric is my thing. I don't I don't really do a lot of like playing. Yeah. Uh, I kind of leave that to my my producer. And yeah, let play. Yeah, let, <laughs> go to town. I mean, I play during my live show, obviously, where we both do play during our live show, obviously. But yeah, we can play guitar, but I mean, it's we ain't making the riff on. I, I'm at least I'm not making. I'm the not riff on either. The track, so I'm not making a riff either. But I feel like I'm a melody guy. I haven't. I moved to town to be an artist. I've never really been like I like my first single was a song I didn't write. And then the second song I put out was a song that you and Tyler Chambers basically wrote. And then the third song is a, 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 like a little more conjunction, but I mean, I definitely would say at the time, Tyler, my Tyler and Brian wrote my third single. So it's like, I know I'm, I'm an artist. So like that's kind of where my head's at, which I'm getting into the songwriting thing, but it's one of them. I just kind of sit back and just try to know what's cool. Don't let anything slide. I wouldn't, my vocal's going to be on it, but I don't, I don't want it to be, you know. I mean, the songwriters are going to love you guys. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes writing their own stuff. These guys, it's hard to get a song placement, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. They're going to, your phone be ringing off the hook. I got a new one for you. You'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. We probably get a lot. I know, at least me, I get a lot of waterfall songs, which are the songs that Just were pitched to somebody that didn't cut. And then it got pitched to so a B list that didn't cut it. And then they sent it to me. I'm like, well, I can write a better song about it than that at this point. You know? Right. You should. You should. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, once we get to that point, you know, we'll start getting the first priority. You that, know, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a, I mean, I feel like for you, though, you spent four years in town writing. Yeah, I'll probably mm-hmm. always write most of my I see, stuff. about holding your craft in, I feel like. Well, yeah. you're doing good at it. So, I mean, you guys both have record labels right now or no? No. Uh, we both cool. have it's like artist development kind of thing. Publishing deals. Yeah. yeah. So how do you get 10 million? And you too, man. I mean, you got a lot of, I mean, collectively you're over millions as well. But, but millions is a big number. I mean, so yeah. it's just playing shows and pushing, pushing, pushing. How do you do it? So, I mean, social media too is a, fun, yeah. a huge thing, honestly. Nowadays. You guys put money into social media? yes label puts money into it but i would say like dylan's had some more organic i've had i just had something halfway organically pop off but dylan's had some organic stuff just take off on really tiktok i feel like is a huge thing a little right bit now. yeah i mean and we even just started before. putting these on tiktok and yeah it's crazy i had twenty thousand uh views i think it is in the first week 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think TikTok helps and, and being on the road helps a lot. I mean, that's you know, the road helps because people that, listen to you. They like it. Next thing yeah. you know, they're listening to all your stuff. You have especially, to. Yeah. Especially when you have an art, an artist, which I think you've like, you definitely, obviously they're your friends, but having an artist that if they take you on tour, they validate you yeah. every night. Yeah. Sure. It's like, I know like if some artists, like they'll just take a, they'll pull somebody on, they'll pull somebody up and just like have them come on the road just because they know they can pull tickets, but like Tim McGraw, I think is real good at that. Mm -hmm. Dylan obviously was good at that. I'm sure Cole's yeah. window is going to be good at that. Most people are. Most people are. But you have, you still have, I've still opened up for a couple of, uh, I would say a minus maybe B plusers that are, <laughs> that are pretty, that are rude, that are really, that are just like, they don't want, you, you know, oh, it's, yeah. they're scared. It's almost like, like, bro, you brought those, all those tickets, dude. Like I haven't, you know, there's maybe 10 people in the crowd that are there for me. Mm -hmm. So whatever. Yeah. That is. But it's all timing. Everything right. came from somewhere. I don't know Tim McGraw's backstory, but I'll guarantee you he was playing in some bullshit places. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which Absolutely. is the question I like to ask. If you guys have any good ones. So some of the fun roadie stories are some of the shitholes that they've actually had to set up the gear in or they played in. Do you guys have any places that stand out that you walked in and either it was amazing you had to play it or, or you were sort of on the other side of like, we got to move all these cows first, you know, <laughs> something. Yeah. You guys have any ones that stand out of places that you think are worth mentioning? When I played the Rave in Milwaukee, that was pretty lit. You played there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. It's like, there's, it's just a pretty well-known place. There's like Matt Miller wrote something and said, my soul remains here. And oh, like, it's, like, it's really creepy. And he wrote it like under the 27 mark and then in the pool, like there's a pool that if you sell it out three times, you get to like sign the pool or whatever. And he wow. wrote it. And he signed and wrote his message. I could pull it up on my phone. It might take a minute, but it says, yada, yada, yada. My soul remains here. And it's under the 27 depth, like feet. Part, That's crazy. Which is like super tricky. I didn't tricky. know that part about it. Oh, yeah. It's like super tricky. Huh. But I mean, that place is pretty cool. I mean, I've, you go to like the dusty armadillo and it's dusty, but it's lit. You know what I'm saying? It's I like, I'm in there yet. Every, I'm trying to think of like places we've, we've like, we've played a lot of good venues, but I feel like there's, a few bad ones. The crowd, I feel like, may, makes it worse than anything. It could be a, it could be a mm -hmm. sick venue and if the crowd ain't cool, or it could be yeah, a shitty brutal. venue. Crowd sass. Yeah. How matter. did you do in California? We can be mean. <laughs> Dude, it was fun. I mean, I think California. I think they just they don't get a lot of country music. So when they do, I mean, they were some of the wildest crowd. California, and New York, were like some of the wildest crowds. <laughs> I will say. To be Where'd honest, you go in uh, California? We went to Anaheim, yeah. uh, San Diego, and one more place. Uh, I don't remember. I forget. There were House of Blues. Two were House of Blues. And one, I think the oh – gosh, I can't remember where else we went. But Did you do fun. Jones Beach in New York? No, we did the uh, Paramount in Huntington. Sure. Jones no. Beach is beautiful. It overlooks the ocean. It's like so – it's such a nice gig. It's a beautiful venue for real. Yeah. I haven't been there yet. Oh, in time, my friend, in time. They like oh. country up there. So it's they good. really do. Yeah. yeah. Actually, country's huge now all over the world. It's interesting. There's a, these guys on here. Have you heard of Waylon? But it's not Waylon Jennings. His name is Waylon. And huh. he's massive. And he's a country artist. But the he's like way? Scandinavian or something. Scandinavian. Huge. Wow. Huh. Wow. Who? I don't know. I wouldn't have thought. I was kind of making fun of it. But it ain't actually anything to make fun of. It's fucking cool is what it is, you know. The diversified was great. I mean, anybody, anybody that just makes a career out of music any in general is fucking, they ought to be, they ought to at least have some respect because this shit's hard. Mm -hmm. it's, this hard. Shit's I agree. Rough. it's hard. I have a lot more respect for people now than I used to. You have, a, you, you, can, you can have a lot of high highs and you can have a lot of low lows. And just as quick as it's fucking here, it's gone. Like it's, yeah crazy i mean just yeah. the amount of whatever yeah just the dealing with everything it's pretty yeah it's a it's an it's a, it's an endurance game marathon not a sprint for sure yeah all right i was putting together this podcast and uh, my buddies have little kids my friend's daughter was in elementary school and she said i should ask every guest when they first felt famous <laughs> okay so i ask each of you guys when did you first feel famous if you don't want to say uh, there, you feel famous, and I really don't give a shit if you feel famous or not, so you can answer it any way you want. 
but if if pick a moment in your career that was like a change something happened that meant something to you uh when was there a moment to each of you guys that's like worth telling i remember when i first had i guess it i guess you could say it was feeling famous because like having people sing back words to a song is just a good damn feeling it's like the crowd control of you being able to be like y'all sing this shit it doesn't matter if it's you know your song or not it feels good to like have them sing back to you and i was like 2017 Riley Green's back 40 bash and Muscadine Bloodline played and Tyler Reeve played and, and Reed Morse played. I wasn't even on the list. They didn't even put my name up there. And I got to sing one song. And it was Hurricane by Luke Combs. It was like right before it kind of was, I don't think it was a number one just yet. So I, I felt like I knew it more than everybody else did. But these Riley Green fans obviously knew Luke Combs because they were like me. They knew Riley Green, whatever that is. So like the, anyways, they sang that shit back to me like it was my song. And I felt like just that <laughs> wave. I was like, wow, what the fuck if that was my song? And <laughs> and I look, I had that the first ever time. I released Raising the Radio in 2018. And I played a show a week after that in hopes, and it worked, in hopes that people would know it enough to, you know, have the crack, have the crowd sing along. And they did. And that was another like solid, like solid moment of like, damn, this is. I'm ch- I'm like as fucked up it is. I'm chasing that that much of a high because that shit. Like, I mean, I smoke pot. Uh, that shit. It's it's a high. It's a high high for sure. Yeah. You seen anybody sing your song? It's like it's just cool. You're like, damn. It could be three people in the crowd that are in the back that you could just see them just vibing along to it that know it. It's like wow. It's just still cool. Weird. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. That's yeah. that part. What do you got, Dylan? Man, I think it's kind of like the same thing. Um, we played a show in like North Carolina. It was kind of after this tour, and um, it was really, there was just a lot of people there that were. It was another Dylan Scott show. But it was kind of off the tour, and that was just probably the most people we've had like singing my stuff back. It kind of felt like the needle was starting to move, you know. Yeah, you think your, like, your mom was proud? It was a proud moment. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your guys's backgrounds? Why did you guys start writing music? That's weird. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a weird, kind of not a weird question. Like, was your mom and dad into music? What what got you into like sitting yeah. there and starting to write stuff? Buddy, really? Yeah, I had a buddy with a guitar that um, down the street, and his grandpa died and gave it to him. Okay. And he kind of brought it to the house, and I started learning. I think I learned like Wagon Wheel or something. And from there, you kind of figure out country is the same chords. Facts. <laughs> So if you take chords from Wagon Wheel, you can play, I don't know, a song by somebody else and keep learning new songs with not really having to learn too many different chords, you know, and then kind of grew into the songwriting thing really, really early on. And that's what kind of got me hooked. And so here we are. Uh, how cool is that? Simple sounding. It's, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot more. I could probably spend two hours on it, but I mean, yeah, just, just meeting people and, and, um, meeting people and playing like some open mic nights back and back home and uh, this little restaurant we had. And so have you written any lyrics that you read back and you're like, that's fucking good. How did I write that? <laughs> I've had some that I've looked back and read that. And I've had some that I've looked back and wondered why I thought that made any sense. <laughs> I have a couple. I hate, I hate, but they're already, it's too late, you know, and you look at it like such a bad lyric. <laughs> how did how did it not get cut out of that why who did that <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i've been there yeah well you move on i don't know whatever nothing's fucking perfect so no, not at all hopefully you do some you do the more better ones and it all works out you know yeah luckily nobody else has to hear all the bad ones unless you put them out you know? right well i remember you they said you see that thing with Joni mitchell on the other day she got up and she sang you know and she's uh you guys know who Joni Mitchell is? Mm-mm. All right. Amazing old folk singer, Woodstock. We talked about Wagon Wheel was Bob Dylan. So like that whole era of stuff. And she uh, she got on and she sang some stuff. She's sitting in a chair, you know, she, she was almost died a few years ago. So it's pretty cool. It's magical stuff, man. And she's sitting in the chair singing these songs. And she's got all these ladies around who, who are big names and uh, mostly country, actually, or not mostly, but uh, one of the judges is uh, on stage with her. And so they're they're giving her accolades, which are so well deserved. But it's super, it's really really cool. 
but you hear her sing the words that she sings and it's like fuck you're good but she came out with an album called hits makes sense but then she came out with this one called misses <laughs> and it's like the songs that didn't do so good and she came out with an album of just that so it shows you how big she is to pull that shit off but at the same hey, time have some balls to do that kind of nutty right kind of nutty so it was, it, was, it was cool i don't know i like that lady especially after that performance can you imagine now i mean i'm gonna say we're young but we're young and you go out there and you play your song but you can imagine doing it when it's kind of mean but you're knocking on death's door i mean it's pretty cool yeah. dude it's pretty cool yeah yeah thanks what about you now what, what got you into wanting to do this something similar i always play guitar and played in church and stuff like that and I had a buddy and uh was doing the same thing it was like or was actually doing the kind of the artist thing or whatever trying to pursue it already released a couple songs started just like back up singing playing guitar for him and then called me out one restaurant and people gave me the validation that i could i should keep doing it and i'm and i was you know as everybody does we you get better and kind of settle into your voice or whatever that is mm -hmm. and that's in high school or earlier or? I, I think i, I would have graduated by then I just graduated like probably yeah i just graduated it was summer of 17 you just graduated from high school no oh summer of, uh summer of 17 is when i graduated oh okay so that around that era era i was kind of like really that's when it kind of started taking the lift off stuff. Oh, that's cool and then your family did cattle yes cattle chickens we have chicken farm really uh which is a lot of chickens. You'd be probably shocked. Yeah. 90,000 a flock. Holy oh, wow. And that's a small, chickens. That's, and that's a small farm. We're a small, we're a smallish farm. There's, they'll have like the mega houses have like 60,000 a house. Do you eat chicken? Oh yeah. <laughs> you do? Oh, so I had a buddy from Bakersfield and he had chickens and he wouldn't eat chickens. He goes, they're filthy animals. I mean, they are filthy, but I mean, you ain't eating you ain't yeah. in the filth. Exactly. That's what I thought. I eat chicken. Yeah. What did your family do, Dylan? Uh, my dad does construction, so I worked okay. with him for a while. He owns his own company, and he used to play uh, drums in a heavy metal Christian rock band. <laughs> okay. Where I was born. So he's always been, like, super cool with this journey, you know, which has been a blessing to have parents that are really cool with me leaving. And you know, It is. Yeah, because I think my mom had me when she was like 17. So they never really had to like, they never really got to chase their dreams. So they've been really pushing me and my my brothers to kind of do our thing, you know, which has been really cool. Maybe you guys are their dream. Not to be right. not to be cheesy, but I think maybe, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's really cool. I think they get to kind of live it out through us. So. 100%. That's awesome. Do you guys find living with each other that you like, will you walk in he's playing a song or something and you'll be like, let me get in on that. <laughs> I'll yeah, write with you. In COVID for sure. Yeah. We're not really home that much. Yeah. Now, to be honest. Just, we're getting over like, oh, will you write the Yeah. Me too. Like, hell yeah. I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Like, going to eat. We're not really home that much. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You guys write more because you live with another musician or nah, it doesn't matter. We'd probably still write the same. Yeah. 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 So yeah, did you write I mean, both writing for our artist projects, you know. So so do you try to write like a song a day or a song a week, or or is there any kind of like regimen or you just write when you feel like it? Whenever my publisher books my rides. <laughs> <laughs> That's when yeah. I write. <laughs> yeah, it's usually like three to five times a week. I mean, and if like, you know, if I'm I we both, I'm sure have those guys you call like if you have a good idea. And, a year, uh yeah, if you have a good idea and it's 12 o'clock at night well it's like might as well use you know use that inspiration so yeah it's always it's always better to write when it's like inspiration rather than just i know some guys that write like eight songs a week and like there's no creativity in that you know it's hard it's well, hard, it's hard to be creative and, that, that this, a song a day i think dolly parton and then uh what's her name major songwriter uh, Diane Warren, she writes a song a day too, supposedly. But uh. there's something to be said about yeah. working that muscle. I've I've read three chapters of a songwriting book, and that had way more than three chapters in it. But I just how far I got into it, and one of the things <laughs> it did say was like, not enough photos. 
Well, it's it, it, one, of the, <laughs> one of the one of the exercises it said to do was take an index card or take you know a piece of paper and you you don't even write you don't even make a melody you don't do anything you just work the lyric you say like if you're trying to write you know grandma's uh, like dirt you could say like dirt up on your grandma's porch we can all smell the dirt up under a porch that was like the, the example it used and it just had a freaking it was crazy how imagery or how Im, the magistive whatever the fuck mm, that word is it made you yeah it made me see it and i was just reading like a little thing about dirt and it was just saying if you do that every day set a timer and no matter if you finish it or not you'll end up just obviously like falling snowball falling to be like where you can dive into that because everybody when i feel like when, when you sit down with co-riders especially especially big co-riders like you're all fishing in the same you're all fishing on a pond and we all have our different boats and they might be out in the middle of the lake just sitting their line and they ain't doing anything we're over here just casting like hell over here but they catch a big ass fish over there and you're like what the fuck and you know, whatever that is, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to just figure out where, yeah, just kind of where you, how to know your spots and know where to dive in yourself. And if you're going to write about a girl missing a girl, then all right, what are the key things up top and what are the trickle down? I think it helps if you play yeah. fishing master and um, that helps that, that makes it way easier. Or go fishing to say fuck song right and go fishing. That works too. Does work. <laughs> depends though you're gonna drink budweiser and miller i don't know if i trust you dude i don't even know who you are <laughs> i uh i don't even really drink i just i i, I partake in the um marijuana, <laughs> marijuana. You know, a lot of the people that come on here they don't drink <laughs> it's called party like a rock star That's but fair. the thing is a lot of a lot of us old fellas um i think i called myself young earlier now i call myself old <laughs> Yeah, they quit. They're all AA, they're rehab. They don't, a lot of older roadies don't drink no more and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, I'm sure, they drink okay. It's cool. a good thing. Keeps your brain clean, makes it so you wake up in the morning, you go work out or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever. We'll yeah. see. So, we got songs coming out of you that have nothing to do with drinking soon, huh? I got a couple songs with drinking in them. Yeah. Good. Where do you have your six picked out? Obviously, I'm sure it's coming out in September. Yeah, so it's like a we're just taking two songs that I already have out and putting them on a mm, um okay. adding three songs, so it'll be five total. Oh, okay. And uh yeah, they're just all all up tempo, really. So but you gotta put out, I feel like. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. You got any yeah, other stories or anything you want to say? You're welcome to throw them my way. If not, what's your craziest story i mean i want to hear yours like what's your like what like what's your uh guns and roses i got to see them live i i know slash and Axel. i can't remember the bass player i'm not, i just when i grew up playing guitar all i cared about was slash didn't really give a shit about anybody else um, <laughs> okay duff i gotta watch them live he's, awesome. so he's amazing Axel changed outfits literally 12 times in the first 30 minutes like he would every like in the middle of a song he'd walk out and come out in a different outfit I swear it's it georgia awesome. it's hot I mean, we were in the we were in Mercedes. We were in the uh, the old Georgia Dome, and it was. I mean, I'm, it's just air conditioned. You know what it really is? Is I think backstage there was these ladies, and they have the fans. So he goes back there to talk to them and get changed. He is, he is Axel Rose. I think that's really why. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah, man. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe by clicking the round button on the bottom right. To learn more about me or the guests on the show, go to joelrody.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. The handle's Joel Rody. And don't forget, when you party like a rock star, don't be a dick. <laughs>